Greetings! I am Herbert Erbaderp, and today I'm going to build something special. This is the XT-45 Soviet Infantry Mech from World War Design. This model was sent to me by a Discord member by the name of Pax Britannica. You may have seen some of his work on Ask a Herbert Erbaderp from time to time. I like this box. It's not super fancy with glossy printing, but it shows what you get, and it's a lot more interesting than just a plain old cardboard box. The instructions are on the back, though I have to say they're not really the easiest to read. I think maybe the image might be a little bit overcomplicated, but you can see how things should go together, so it's really a minor complaint. The top of the box has a little bit of lore about the XT-45, and mentions that it not only has saws, but also flamethrowers. Cool. Anyway, as disclosure I was sent this kit for free as a review copy. I'm going to build it and give my own feedback. This is the first miniature in what is hoped will become a successful range of 28mm scale wargaming miniatures, and the intention is to create an alternate history wargame with fleshed out lore based in the late 1940s. This will involve a war between the Soviet Union and the remaining Allied powers. The XT-45 is, at the time of recording, the only model World War Designs has available, but a British mech is planned sometime soon, and I'm looking forward to that. I think all of this is awesome, and I wish great success upon World War Designs. If you're interested, there's a Facebook page which I will link in the description below. Go check it out. Ok, so let's have a look at what comes in the box. There's a base which is 50mm in diameter and very bassy. The important bits are in the little baggie though. As you can see there are 10 resin parts. These are really quite neat. Some cleanup is going to be needed, but you can expect that of every kit so it's not really a problem. I think everything here looks quite good, and there's some nice detail. I particularly like the big bolts. They should be fun to paint. Of course this isn't based on a real thing at least I don't think it is, so we don't need to worry about accuracy or realism. What matters here is that everything looks neat and is interesting and cool to look at. As I said, cleanup is going to be needed, but there's not a lot to do, just a bit of sanding here and there. Because this is resin you should definitely wear at least a dust mask when sanding this stuff. I cleaned up the parts and here they are in a pile. First I take the torso, which I think looks really cool. It kind of reminds me of a welding mask or a riot shield. I figure it makes some sense to start by joining the, what would you call this, lower body? Hips? Whatever it is it fits neatly into the hole in the bottom of the torso. There's a lot of freedom in how this could be attached, but I've decided that having it face straight ahead would be best. Obviously with this being a resin model, super glue should be used to bond it together. Plastic cement doesn't melt resin and thus won't work here. The instructions don't really provide any order in which we should do things, and I don't think it really matters. But in my mind, the next logical step would be to add the legs. Like anybody else, I do one leg at a time. This is pretty simple. I think to make a convincing pose it's a good idea to test fit with the feet, just to get an idea of how it's going to be standing. And then glue the leg on. There's a lot of posability with these legs, and indeed with the entire model which I think is great. I'm not going to pose this one into outrageous a position, but I can see a lot of cool ways to pose this model. When the first leg is on, the other one can be attached in pretty much the same way. My XT45 is going to have a very slight forward lean. I hold the leg in place, again testing with the foot to make sure it looks good, and then when it's bonded it's freestanding. Nice. Then it makes sense to glue the feet on. This is very easy, and because I attached the legs with the feet as guides, I know that everything is going to go together nicely. And because I know it's free standing, I don't have to hold the parts while they bond. Now for the arms. You could do this any way you like, but I figured it would be less fiddly to glue the two arm parts together, and then glue that assembly to the body. This is pretty simple, but do make sure that you are using the correct parts. The upper arm has a plate of armour that should be facing outwards, and the lower arm with the saw should have the flamethrower part facing outward. There's a lot of choice in how you angle the arm parts, so I would suggest you think a little bit about how you want the arms to be posed before gluing them. 
The next step is obviously to glue the arms on. This is pretty easy, though of course as superglue is sentient and a jerk, it took a lot longer to bond these into place. Superglue only likes to bond quickly when you aren't quite sure of the position you want. Sure there is stuff to make it bond faster, but I don't have any, and it would be kind of hard to use when both of your hands are already in use. I don't know about you, but I've only got two hands. Complaints about superglue aside, the arms are very easy to get into place. You might see the position of the right arm change slightly from here to the end clip and in the painting video because I have managed to knock it out of place a couple of times now, though it is more my fault than the kits. And it is another complaint about superglue actually. Anyway, the XT45 flame shooting saw arm boy is now complete. I think this is a really cool little model. It looks great and I'm pretty excited to start painting this and once I've finished pondering on what colours to use, I'll begin. I mean, Russian green is an obvious choice, but I think it might also look quite good in red, or maybe pink? Either way, I'm going to begin painting this somewhat soon. That's not to say it's going to be done next week, but soon enough. In my opinion, the detail looks rather good. There's a lot of big bolts and stuff that will catch dry brushing and weathering quite nicely. One thing that I'm not sure about is the bits across the tops of the knee plates. I'm not sure that's meant to be there, but I've left it because I think it kind of looks cool, and those plates seem like they might be a bit delicate and I didn't want to break them. If you've been around my channel long enough you'd know that I'm not the biggest fan of resin, but this was still quite enjoyable to put together. I mean, I'm not totally opposed to resin, and I do understand why it's used for smaller runs and things like that. And in this case everything was nicely moulded and easy to work with. I'm definitely fine with resin if it's well made like this. The model didn't need a whole lot of cleanup, though as I said earlier, when working with resin and doing things like sanding it, definitely wear a mask. It's not good to get that dust in your lungs. If I had one gripe, it would be that the instructions on the back of the box aren't all that clear. And to be fair that is a very minor gripe. The build is not so complex that you can't figure out what's going on and where things go, but I do think it was worth noting. Other than those things, cleanup and assembly is quite simple, which is really what most people want in a gaming model. I rather like that there is so much you can do with this model in regards to how you pose it. That's quite good if you've got a bunch of these. It would be really easy to make them look like individuals rather than identical models, and that's something I like. So that's a look at the World War Designs XT45. What do you think? Does this kind of thing interest you? If so, definitely check out their Facebook page and show some support and encouragement. I think this is a really nice model and a great start at what hopefully ends up being a whole range of cool models. So do be sure to share what you think in the comment section below and keep an eye out for a painting video of this XT45. If you are watching this in the future, there'll be a link to it somewhere below. If you've not done so already, why not subscribe, follow, ring the bell, become a patron or YouTube member, and all the other things you do on the internet. And if you're feeling really helpful, share this video around. Links to all of my things are in the description below. And as always, I shall return soon. So until then, be excellent to each other, and thanks for watching. Farewell.